job description carefully enough. <laughs> oh, watch it. You nearly blinded me with that thing. Hmm. Is that what I think it is? Well, I didn't win it in your amusement arcade. <laughs> well done, girl. Congratulations. Thanks. Philip's a very mature, very focused bloke. Good bet for the future. Hmm. That's not why I'm marrying him. To tell you the truth, it's a bit of a relief. What do you mean? Well, for one awful minute, I thought you were going to end up with Mike Nichols. Look, I'll tell you what, see, as it's a special occasion, I'll make the copy. I'm hosted on drive toast. I've asked Jane to marry me. She said yes. Congratulations, I hope you'll be very happy. Excited about really coming home. Can't say I haven't missed it. <laughs> to keep me fit while we're dead to start with. Well, I might have a nice homecoming present for her. Eddie, he's short of a handle with some Barbara. I suggested you for the job, and he said okay. Go back to sea. It, it wouldn't be like having your own boat, I know, but it'd be a bit of regular money. Hmm. But why don't you think about it? Don't take too long, because he wants an answer by the weekend. Morning. Where's Steve? I sent him to buy some humbugs. Jane's got engaged. What are you going to do? Check the weather charts. I love you, but sometimes I can really throttle you. He's going to take her away. You'll never see her again. She's made her choice. No, she hasn't. You never gave her a choice. Well? well what do you want me to say? It's difficult. Why? Because of Pete. Whatever happened on that boat, I'm sure she never really blamed you. You can't carry the past around with you for the rest of your life. What are you going to call her? She's got to have a name. The untouchables. Like you and Uncle P? Yeah. I thought I'd find you here. Come on. You'll be late for school. I hope you haven't got paint on you. We're taking mine for a celebration lunch. Congratulations. What do you want me to do about the fishing licenses? What do you think you should do? Send reminders. I'm launching the boat on Sunday. Thought I'd take a trip. What? You never said anything. 
Yeah, I want to get away for a while. Well, for how long? I'm not sure. Great. Sorry, it's just a tender relief and knowing Simpson would be a cross between Goebbels and Genghis Khan. Well, that's not exactly how I describe you. What? Well, I wondered if you'd like the job. I mean, it's a bit quiet in the winter, but you do get the last chocolate biscuit. You think I'm up to it? Well, more to the point, do you? Yeah, I'd like to give it a go. Good. What about Simpson? A blade with the keys to the safe, you'll never buy it. Don't want to go back to London. Jake, we'll buy a new house. You can help choose it. Don't want a new house. We'll come back and see Grand and Grandad lots of times. What about Mike? How do you mean? We're building a boat. Jake, this is supposed to be a happy day. You don't want to make him unmiserable, do you? No, he's not. It's quite natural for you to feel worried. Any change makes us all feel a bit funny at first. Have you spoken to your parents? I thought I'd call them later tonight. They're supposed to be docking in Sydney today. Can I have a chocolate fudge ice cream? Well, only if you eat healthy vegetables. Mum, those are the little sweetie. You know that. Indefinite leave? You've got to be kidding. Yeah, well, I'll keep you informed of my plans. You can't go sailing off around the world just because you didn't land Jane. That you owe me annual holiday. Plus, time in lieu of the days you insisted I worked in the summer. Philip will be the making of her. You mark my words. I found someone to cover for me. That's not within your jurisdiction. I've asked Steve. Steve Blade? Have you finally gone off your trolley? Despite your original objections, he's done very well. He's a blade, but... He'll have the arbor sold off piece by piece by the time you come back. What's your problem? Are you too proud to admit you made a mistake? Of course not. He's very good at his job. Everyone says so. Harbour Master is a very responsible position. He's underqualified. Well, he's passed all his tests with flying colours. Yeah, well, that's all very well. But has he got the stamina? Huh? Looks very pasty to me. He's probably missed his mum's cooking. The people were very upset when Rita went to prison. The council elections are coming soon. If people find out that you denied Steve a job just because he's a blade. He's blackmail. Right, I'll think about it. But you are pushing your luck. I do know how fond you two are of this place. Jake will be fine. He, he just needs time to get used to it. Yeah, That's he'll idea. adjust. He's a very sensible little chap. Mm -hmm. Well, getting married here will help. It'll be easier to accept to be surrounded by people he knows. Here? Yeah, but I thought you'd want a more private do in London with just a few good friends. Darling, this is your day. I just want it to be perfect for you. I'm not sure. In fact, why don't we throw an engagement party? Ask everyone. You hate parties. Well, this is different. I'm a very lucky man, and I want the whole world to know it. Oi! Leave my alone! Get out of there! You must have some idea when you're going to be back. Sorry I'm late. I can't believe you want to leave this wreck in charge while you're away. I'm not a wreck. Yeah? Prove it. How? An endurance test on Friday. Ten miles over the moors to be completed in two hours. Route to be devised by me. OK. Sure. Good. And you can fill one of them out. You don't have to do it, you know. I talk to him. What, make him think I'm a coward? But enough of Tony Simpson getting the better of my family. So sorry I'm late. Oh, don't worry. You can't be a little bit late on a day like today, eh? Thanks. <laughs> Your mum and dad must be very pleased. I haven't told them. Oh. How far around the world are they exactly now? Halfway. <laughs> are they going to be back in time for the wedding? I'm not sure. Phil seems pretty keen to get married quickly. <laughs> Good man. No, I, I was just thinking, you know, if um, for any reason they, they don't make it back in time and, you know, you, you needed someone to give you away, then, um, well, I don't have any children of my own and um, <laughs> not that I'm old enough to be a father, of course, but uh, besides, um, you know, I want to get in Philip's good books. <laughs> it's a business thing on 
I think he might be interested in. <laughs> We're glad to see you. There's something seriously wrong with that. You turn this for Mum, but get my ask when she comes home. Do you think I should call the doctor? Hey, what do you reckon? Dad, you've got half a carrot lined up with a tomato. Huh, so there she's trend, isn't it? Genetically engineered vegetables. <laughs> Look, what's this all about, Dad? Your way of being nice to Mum is to bring her a bottle of stout and a bag of chips on a Friday night. I'm a changed man, Steve. Just want to show her I care. Who put the light out? I know what Jane's doing. It's classic. Mike's stubborn lump won't say anything. Probably fears rejection. My sister obviously took him off the nipple too soon. Jane's all churned up inside. Feels vulnerable. Single mother, dead brother, parents away. Philip comes into her life and takes charge. The man's a compulsive. He even tried to rearrange my maracas collection. But I... A knight in Teflon armor, and she falls for it. I'm gonna go and talk to her right now. Bella, this is for them to sort out. Maybe she does love him. Not deep down. Not so her heart does the salsa and she can't swallow. If anyone knows when someone's in love, it's me. this conversation once what do you really feel well that's not important now yes Mike it is I want to go back to the day before Pete's death I want to be able to kiss you and not feel what if I can move on why can't you Tell me you don't love me. So what are we supposed to do? Part and get on with the rest of our lives? Well, isn't that what you're doing? Why, Mike? Because I don't want to hurt you. That's what men say when they give you the brush off. Well, in my case, it's true. Make sure you wear all the right gear, won't you? Yes, Dad. Has he made up his mind about the job yet? Who? Your dad. What job? G? Yeah, hey! Hey! Oh, what are you doing here? Oh, oh, Jane's always about the party, isn't she? Free beer, mate. Free beer. <laughs> yeah, I heard you left the Navy. Yeah, well, things aren't quite the same after the accident. What are you up to now? Ah, oh, painting, decorating, you know. Fancy being my own boss for a change, no offence. So, what uh, asked Jane. You know, we were going to pop round there, yeah? You know, what's this Phil bloke like? Pete always hoped that you and she would get together. Look, she doesn't know what really happened. I'd appreciate it if you didn't say anything. Well, Pete was a great diver. She's got to be curious. Probably thinks we threw him over. <laughs> we were able to say aunties, is that all right? Well, I think she'd be very happy if he didn't. Well, uh, shall I go and book us in, then? Yeah, yeah. There you go. She's looking really well. 
Yeah, I don't deserve her. I gave her a pretty hard time when I first came out. You know, one day she's trying to cheer me up and I just exploded. You know, I might as, might as well have just have punched her. She just stood there staring at me and uh, then she said it seemed to her that Pete wasn't the only one that died that day. I was going to tell you. When? When the job had gone? I'm not afraid of hard work. Only because you wouldn't recognise it. Mum would be well happy if you had that job. I decorated the bedroom, didn't I? Oh. Dad, vandals could have done better. Look, I didn't want to worry you before. Well, well, I've got a serious complaint. Serious? Well, it's not life-threatening. I lost my sea legs. <laughs> Would he be under the stairs with your wallet and boots? It's no laughing matter. A sailor knows when his sea legs are gone. The days on the brown are up. And uh, what exactly are the symptoms? Well, uh, they're, uh, you know, dizziness and being sick. That happens every Friday night when you've been down the pub. <laughs> could be very dangerous. I mean, I could fall over the side and never be seen again. I reckon this calls for a dose of rehab. I've tried milk and magnesia. It don't work. <laughs> I still get nightmares. Yeah, me too. I find myself playing things over in my mind, you know, all the maybes and finally giving them permission to go down that last well, I time. I the boat. For a long time, I thought it was my fault. How'd you work that out? Well, if I hadn't have gone in, you know, Pete was a great bloke and you saved me. He got himself killed, eh? So? Yeah, let's tell me first up to it. There was nothing either of us could have done. I've been waiting a long time for someone to say that. Maybe if we talked more at the time. We were too close. Right? He was our best mate and he behaved like a complete idiot. No wonder it's easier to blame ourselves. What are you going to do? Rub me in my boots and frog march me down the boat? Actually, it's me who's going to be doing the marching. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to say this, but Mark's going on a trip. And if I can prove to Simpson I'm fit, I get the job. What exactly does Simpson want you to do? Walk over up coals? Hello, George. Um, I don't think I ever thanked you properly for giving our Steve a job. Yeah, well, he was the best candidate. Oh, he's a very capable lad. He takes after his mum. Um, this endurance test. A walk it. Yeah, but it's up in the hills, isn't it? It's been raining for weeks. And it's getting dark very early now. Yeah, you'll have a map and a compass. It'll be all right. I've looked after the family as well as I could. I mean, all right, the exploding tin of beans on the back of the telly was a bit of a setback, but on the whole... No, you've coped extremely well. No, oh, I can't take all the credit. I mean, Steve, he's done more than his fair share. You know, I think we're the unluckiest family in the world. It is a pothole to fall in or a cow pat to... Now, I don't want to jeopardise Steve with this job, but... His mother comes home in a couple of days and, uh... And you want the whole family in one piece to welcome her back? That's about the size of it. Yeah, well, I've been stuck behind this desk for a, a long time now. Why don't I join him? You are a gentleman. You know that? <laughs> now, you won't tell Steve that I've been, will you? Because there's nothing worse than an interfering family. No way. What about your job offer? Uh, I don't think it's going to work out. Caribbean cruise. I haven't won it, have I, on the budget breeders' raffle? <laughs> close, close. Come on, Dad. Look, we're almost there now. What are you two up to? Down we go. Down? No! I'm sorry, Dad. No! <laughs> Hello? Oh, Philip. May I introduce you to someone? 
some friends of Jane. Yeah. This is Jean and Dan. Hello, hi. Glad you could make it. Uh, Jane, tell me all about you. You serve with her brother? Yeah. Well, thanks for coming. <laughs> if you want any help organising the party. Oh, that's very sweet of you, Auntie, but I'm managing okay on my own. It's, it's my gift to Jane and all her friends. What are you playing at, you duck worms? It's therapy. We're gonna row you round in this harbour until you get your sea legs back. You all right? I won't ask. Oh, I... Can I ask you something? Will you marry my mum? Who's marrying Philip? I know, but he doesn't like finger marks on the fridge door. And he hasn't got a boat. Well, he's very fond of you. He talks to me like I'm a kid. He's not unkind, is he? He's a bit strict sometimes. And he supports Chelsea. But I suppose he's OK. Don't you like my mum? Yeah. And why don't you marry her? Well... You want the man-to-man -man truth? Yeah. I think it's too late. No, it isn't. Not until they say I do. I've seen it on telly. This woman rushed in. I'm sorry, Jane. What about the boat? Well, it's finished. I'm launching her on Sunday. Philip! Hi. Didn't have you down as a gambling man? Well, I'm organising the engagement party. It's, it's not really my field of expertise. You leave it to me. We'll have none of these lumps of cheese on toothpicks you normally get round here. <laughs> no, no, no. Canapes. Quail's egg tartlets. Devils on horseback. Yeah. <laughs> so who else are you inviting? Most of Bridehaven. Oh, well, second thoughts. <laughs> no, I really want this to be a night that people remember. So let's push the boat out. Give us a bite. I'm starving. Fresh knock. Don't want you getting seasick. All right. I'll take the ruddy job. What are you doing here? I thought I'd join you. I reckon I'll cheat, do you? No, I can do with the exercise before my trip. even think about taking any shortcuts because I shall be expecting a yard by yard description. And if you're not back here by 1500 hours, I shall be advertising for a relief harbour master first thing Monday morning. Congratulations. Thank you. I was going to see you. Jane, sweetheart, all I want is for you and Jake to be happy. If you think that lies with Philip, then I'm really pleased for you. Oh, by the way, have you been having palpitations recently, like your heart was doing the salsa? No. Oh. Just wanted. Make a good sign. I think I might get a nameplate made from my desk. That really gets Simpson down. Yeah. coordinates on a map with a compass. The road and Simpson should be here. We've obviously made a miscalculation. Duff compass, more like. Oh, this is hopeless. We'll never get back in time. It's nearly three o'clock. We're in Dorset, not the Himalayas. Shame it's so misty. Hang on. The wind forecast was northeasterly. Oh, 
you doing? I've lost me wellies. Hey, I've walked into a bog, all right? Put in there. Careful, it's like quicksand. If I hadn't got my boots off in time, it would have had all of me. Can I join you? I'm really worried. What's happened? Well, Mike went off on this endurance thing, Steve. He was supposed to be meeting Dan for a drink half an hour ago, but he didn't show up. Well, um, perhaps they've had a flat tyre. Why don't you go back to the hotel, just in case he rings? Dan's on phone duty. I was too agitated to stay in. I've got this little eczema spot, which always plays up when Mike's in trouble. How is it? Itching like billiard. Piece of used chewing gum, two fluffy mints, and a toy compass. But I believe it. Well, no wonder you've been getting this lost. The compasses have been confusing each other. Oh, Jason, he borrowed my gear last week. I'll kill him. That's the vent. Any uh, hypothermia setting in? It's not that I'm not grateful, Mike, but I look like a prat. It's the curse of the blades, do you know that? Everything that happens is a joke. Something just licked my head. I think your luck's just changed. I'll call the police. Rescue. I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. Anything could have happened out there. Mike wouldn't want you making a fuss. You've always let him go his own way. He's the child I never had, Shane. Well, when you love someone, you have to trust them. I made plenty of mistakes in my life. Mike isn't one of them. I suppose I'm a bit more on edge because of this trip of his. Mike's going away. It's not that I'm panicking. I mean, we've done all the right things. People know where we are. We're wearing the right clothing. It's just, well, it is getting late. And if the fog's in, we've had it. I sometimes wonder if I didn't bring him up to be too self-reliant. My mum always says there are two courses of action in times of crisis. A cup of tea or a bit of praying. Why don't we hedge our bets and do both? Elvis, we have two cups of tea. <laughs> Amazing. Good teamwork. Except I've blown it. We're way over our time limit. Simpson's going to love this. Where have you been? I could have died here. Cold can kill, you know. Anyway, you're two hours late. I reckon your protégé's... What's happened to your boots? I, I only lost them in the bog. Oh, it's my fault he's late. If you hadn't pulled me out, I'd have been in real trouble. Yeah, well, I made the rules very clear. If he misses the deadline, he loses the job. No, I think he's proved he can step into my shoes. Get in the car. I mind where you put your muddy feet. Cup of tea always works miracles. Don't you want to find out what happened? He's arrived safely. That's all that matters. Hello, stranger. You've been waiting long. Help me up. I think I've got frostbite. Don't ask me where. I have a feeling. Come in. Make a holiday somewhere warmer. Actually, I'm back for good. 
I've been stationed at Brighthaven again. I'm gonna have a crack at becoming sergeant. Oh, why stop there? You could be the first woman police chief in the county. <laughs> I meant to write to you, Mike. Only everything seemed a bit, a bit awkward. Yeah, I did try and see you the day you left. You know? Yeah, well, it's history. And I was never very good at history. Biology is a different matter. Sorry. Sorry, I'm a bit nervous. You? I was pretty angry when I left Mike. But then I thought about it and I realised that you never really mucked me about. I did all the running. God, has the girl no shame? Melanie. Please, I've been practising this. I never want to be second best. And I'm not stupid. You and Jane, well, if that's all over, then maybe in time. You are extraordinary. Is that good or bad? That's good. Look, I, I enjoy being with you very much. You know that. But? But I'm not sure what I can promise right now, and that's not fair on you. Oh, Mike, I'm a grown-up. I think that's for me to decide. Do you know your problem? You think too much. Yeah? Mm. Keep things simple if you want to be happy. That's what my mum says. And the only thing she and my dad ever argue about is squeezing the toothpaste. Oh, we start at the bottom and roll up. Uh, see? We are compatible. Well, what are you doing about food? I could rustle up some pasta. Nah, don't worry about it. Mum's making me bread and butter pudding as a special treat. I'll see you later at the party. Yeah, I look forward to it. Thank you. What for? Oh, just, just thanks. suppose if you've been banged up for three months, oh. even Dad looks sexy. It... Mum, I think Dad's got some good news for you. What, you didn't tell the vicar that joke about the nun and the mousetrap, did you? Better than that. <laughs> I don't think I could bear it. I've got a job back on the boats. A job with real wages? Oh, national insurance of all works. Competition was quite stiff, but uh, they recognised quality when they saw it. I couldn't think of a better coming home present. Yeah. Come on, you. Get the tea on. She won't feel so frisky after she sees that wallpaper. <laughs> Any last-minute things I can help you with? Philip's asked me to help him. Everything's under control, thank you.
I don't know about you, but I don't think it's much fun going to an engagement party on your own. Me neither. And as much as I love to see you semi-naked, do you mind putting a pair of trousers on? I hate the other girls to realise what they're missing out on. You'd rather go in on your own. What, well, leave it to the competition? Thank you very much. Hi. Oh, this is a daft idea. Mum, ever want to be knocked out? Of course they will. What, the jailbird? The ex-criminal? Look, the first person to say anything is going to get hurt. You're going to have to face him sooner or later, though. Especially Simpson. Get it over with in the job lot, eh? Come on. Come on. Rita! I'm so glad you can make it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I want you to meet Philip Davenport, my fiancé. This is Rita Blade. I'm very pleased to meet you. Kelly, where's the little The magistrate. Don't stop you playing judge and jury on Steve. One thing's for sure, you'll never get a welcome like that. <laughs> now, I'm going to launch the boat tomorrow, take a trip. And I just got back. Can I come? I thought you got seasick. Yeah, most attractive on green. Enjoying yourself? I always get sentimental when I know I'm leaving a place. Everything will be easier when we get to London, you'll see. Do you want to dance? Yeah. <laughs> Love your husband. Although he's got a gammy leg, he's still the best mover in the world. <laughs> be my guest. Come on, George. <laughs> So what's it like to be home, Mum? Strange. Great, but strange. <laughs> to come out of ladies is a pig. No, I go. I win. She ain't a pig. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> Some things never change. You've got the job. What? You've got the job. Leave 
I don't reckon Pete would have much time for this Philip bloke. <laughs> it's good to hear you two talk about Pete in a normal way, instead of all this guilt. What guilt? Who's guilty about what? Was, was his death an accident or, or, or not? Were you responsible? Guilt because we cared. Because he was a mate. And he was gone and we're still here, but not because of the way Pete died. Do you want to know what I think about that? No! Pete was mucking about. Good old Pete was up to one of his stunts again. If he'd have done what Mike said, he'd be with us now. Don't lie to protect Mike! He protected me. I nearly lost my life because of your precious brother. Mike pulled me out of the water, otherwise I'd be dead too. What? Mike wanted to go in after Pete, but it was obviously too late. We had to hold him back. I believe you. You asked the Navy. They tried to give him a commendation, but he wouldn't have any of it. He pulled all the favors he could to make sure your family never got to know how Pete died. He wouldn't have seen the body if it weren't for Mike. He loved the Navy. <laughs> but Pete's death gutted him. Why didn't he tell me? Why do you sing? <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention for a moment, please. We now come to the serious business of the evening. As you probably know, Jane's mum and dad can't be with us this evening. So, it falls to me to do the honours. Now, Jane was always a happy, though it has to be said, a mischievous little girl. The clockwork mouse at the cat show was one of her more memorable exploits. But when she found herself stuck down here without a job, I did not hesitate for one second before offering her a position. And though she had a lot to learn, I can honestly say I think I have made a career woman out of her. Whatever she takes on, she tackles it wholeheartedly, if a little unconventionally. Yeah. So, one thing I can promise you, Philip, mate, life is not going to be dull. Well, <laughs> and with Jane, of course, comes a little chap who we've all come to love. Jake, all the very best with your new life, son. And come back and visit us soon. Take care, Jake. So, <clears throat> if the two lovebirds would like to make their way up on stage, I've got a little present for them. What, a Simpson selection box? <laughs> well, don't tell me you lost her already, Phil. You haven't even got to the altar yet. <laughs> Come on, what are we waiting for? Well, uh, this could be a job for you, Melanie. Sorry, Councillor, I'm off duty. <laughs> Jane? Jane, are you out there, love? <laughs> Come on, Jane. Well, uh, perhaps somebody could check the ladies for me? I'm here. Here she is. <laughs> Bridehaven has clubbed together, or been clubbed, <laughs> to buy you this. You won't believe the trouble we had getting it out of the bottle. There you go. This is beautiful. Thank you very much. Despite arriving here with the intention of taking Jane away from here, you've all made me very welcome. I know that in the future, Jane, Jake, and I will be returning here many times. So thanks, everyone, for coming, and here's to the next party, our wedding. Thanks. Thanks for everything.
great party, thank you. My pleasure. Right, I will see you tomorrow then. Great. Do you want to go back to my place? Can we go to your office? He was always getting into trouble. Yeah. Stupid idiot. What did he think he was doing? He certainly wasn't thinking of people who loved him, that's for sure. You could have told me. I wanted you to remember him as a free spirit. And I'm the one who says, with love comes trust. I'm so sorry. There's no need. There is, it's a great need. You were taking care of me, my mom, my dad. A lot of people would have just told the truth and let themselves off the hook. change things, doesn't it? Now that I know how Pete died, there's nothing left to come between us. What about Philip? Well, I mean, even before Dan spoke to me, I knew I'd, I'd made the wrong decision. I couldn't make Phil happy. It just seemed too cruel to tell him in the middle of the celebrations. So now you want me? You may have kidded yourself, you moved on, but deep down you still felt I could have been responsible for his death. Well, I was confused. Face it, Jane, you don't know what you want. And until we're both certain, then this has got to stop. I name this boat the Untouchables. May God bless her and all who sail in her. Yay! <laughs> That's a waste of good booze if you have three. Speech, Mike! Speech, Mike! Uh, right, well, I'd like to thank everyone who's helped with the boat, uh, especially Jake. Without his hard work, we wouldn't be here today. Tony Simpson uh, for allowing me extended leave. And Steve for agreeing to run the place in my uh, absence. And uh, of course, all of you lot for turning up. I'm very grateful for all your friendship and support. You've been fantastic. I'll see you all at Christmas. Thank you.